competition, when you present, you're going to have very different types of businesses, right? Each of you have different interests and talents, and so how are we going to determine who goes to, uh, to get the first prize, who goes to America? The judges will have to rate you on something called growth potential, meaning how big is your market, how big can your company grow. They're also judging you on uh, innovation too, if, if you have a really um, good idea and you have a good way of making money. But one, one part that some of the students last year had difficulty with is understanding what is growth potential and what is scalability. So I'm going to take about 10 minutes to... So the product is growing your business. Yes, exactly. Right, so the scale is the idea of starting with your minimum viable product, right? A small product, right, that you're not investing very much money in. And then showing people how you're going to grow that to be a bigger business. What the people in Moldova, the judges will ask you, and especially the people in America want to know, is how will you be solving the problems by using your business? How will you solve the problems of not just 10 people, not just 15 people, but can your business work in other countries? Can your business solve problems around the globe? Okay? All right, so first question, how big is the market? The judges will have that written on their piece of paper, so you'll want to be able to answer them in your presentation and in your concept paper. How big is your market? How many potential customers exist? This is another really good reason why you need to be specific on the lean canvas with who are your potential customers. On here, you should have written down if they're between the ages of 14 to 21, if they're male or female, where they live, right? And you should be able to do some research to understand in general how many of those potential customers exist. How many people that fit in that group exist in the world. And you can talk about it for potential customers today, Vishniki, they wanted to start in Chaturunga. Ultimately, they wanted to, to grow their business, to scale their business to all of Eastern Europe. So they explained to the judges, right now we have 3,000 potential customers in our local market. But we want to grow to have Moldova market of, I don't know, 10,000 customers, the, the international market of 1 million customers. And they showed how people fit into their customer segment, how they fit into their box. So be ready to explain how many potential customers exist now, in two years, and in five years. How many competitors exist, right? So yes, maybe you have a million potential customers, but you probably won't get 100% of them. If there are other competitors or competition that is already serving this group of people, that will help the judges understand how, how difficult it will be for you to grow. And then, is this market growing or shrinking? As we talked about with the, the uh, iPhone or with any type of smartphone device, more and more people around the world are able to use applications. And so, the reason that these businesses are growing that create applications for phones is because every year more and more people are able to use their, their applications that they can make money off of. And so that is a growing trend. And if, I don't, I'm not saying you need to create an application business, but if you were, you would need to explain to people how big the market is going to be, not only today, but in five years when even more people have smartphone devices. Even people in Africa and China, places that don't have them yet. What's the market going to look like in a few years? And so, when you're talking about what is the market, your startup can be either going into an existing market, something that already exists today, or you can be creating a new market. People didn't buy a product like this in the past, and you are you are introducing a very unique product or service. The, 
the iPhone was the first smartphone device, right? They couldn't, Steve Jobs, the, the, the CEO of Apple, he couldn't go online and research how big the existing market was because people only were buying other phones that didn't do anything, right? They weren't using the internet, they weren't doing much. And so what he did with the iPhone, with the, uh, the, the um, iPod, with computers, he created a new market and he introduced people to problems they never knew that they had. In 1995, my parents didn't know that it was a problem for them that they, could, they couldn't read email on their phone. They didn't know it was a problem because they didn't know there was a potential solution. And so when we talk about new markets, sometimes the people don't know that your product is possible. They don't know that a problem exists and they have it. It could be a big risk, but it also could be a big reward. You have to make sure that they have the problem. So, how do you measure this? If you're going into an existing market, don't feel like you need to write this down. It's all online. You know it's here. But you could write into your paper that my market potential, how big my market is going to be, is going to be the number of my potential customers, everyone who fits in my customer segment, times the market share. I think that I'm going to sell to about 30% of all the people in this segment. You need to also have an average selling price. So my, my product is going to cost 500 lei. And then the, um, how often they buy per year. And with, with this, you'll be able to tell the judge, you know, when I'm only selling in Moldova, I expect that my market potential, how much money I can make next year, is going to be 5,000 lei or 500,000 lei or one million left. But it gives the judge a specific number to think about. And then you can paint a picture, you can show them of your vision in five years, you're gonna have more people and possibly a greater price, and you can say, next year our our market potential is five thousand lead, but we will grow in five years, our market potential is one million lead. Okay. If you have questions about this, this is a difficult section. If you have questions about this, you have Peace Corps volunteers who are ready to help, and you all have mentors who know this better than us. So you can speak to people to help you get these numbers right and to do the research. But know that this is something the judges will be looking for. How big is the market? If you're creating a new market, you can do some research. You can look at Statistica and Big. You can look at Google Trends or some of these other websites about entrepreneurship to understand maybe someone already in America was trying to start a similar business and they know about how many people you could sell to in, if you were in America. And you can relate that to Moldova if people have similar problems here. So just trying to find ways to do some research. Also doing interviews with people understanding that in your village 10% or 20% of the people in your village wanted to buy your product. Well, that means that maybe 20% of people in villages in Moldova would want to buy your product. And instead of just guessing how many people in Moldova will buy your product, you could say, I assume that 20%, I assume that my village is like the rest of the villages in Moldova. And so, our market potential is 20% of the Moldovan market. If, if my, I can make 5,000 lei by, by selling only in my village because 20% of the people are going to buy my product, I also think that 20% of the people in Moldova, in Moldovan villages, will buy my product. And that's how much my market potential is. Okay? Like I said, slightly complicated point, and we're here to help out in the future. Just know that you need to be ready to explain this to judges. How will you capture the market? Very important. It's not enough to say that if I create this business, I could sell to 5,000 people in Moldova or 100,000 people in Moldova. The judges want to know 
how you will do that. They want to know who are your early adopters, who are your first 10 people you're going to sell to. What are they going to do with your product? Will they tell people about your product? Who are your next 10 people? Who are your next 100 people? And so don't just give them a number of 5,000 people in Moldova. Give them a story of how you will grow your business, how you will solve more and more problems in the world. Okay? And what is your market takeover strategy, right? Your market takeover strategy of how you grow your business, how you say there are 5,000 people in Moldova who want my products, they don't know it yet, but they do want my product. How will I make sure that they know about my product? And you can go from the south to make sure everyone in the south knows about your product, then the center in the south, and then all of Moldova. So it can be regional. Try to grow by the area, or the location. You can be demographic, meaning most of the people who want to buy my products are mothers, young mothers. So I'm going to go form a partnership with Boma Beach, and I'm going to partner my, my advertisement with their bags. And I'm not going to focus on only people in the south or in the north. I'm going to focus on a type of person, young mothers, right? Try to come up with a strategy. And then an interest. Maybe, maybe you are creating a product that soccer fans really like. Well, then your strategy could be based on going to football matches, and you could go to Zimbru, you could go to Dacia, you could go to these different teams and advertise there. Right? The important point in my last slide is that you need to, you need to explain what you will do just like you were playing chess. It's not enough to say, I have so many people in Moldova, or I have so many people in the world who want to buy my product, I can make a million dollars with this idea, this business idea. That's good, but the judges need to know how you will move from one spot to the next, how you will defeat other competitors, because you will have people that will try to copy you, right? You need to explain how you will win, win the game, win the chess match, right? How you will grow to a size that will be able to serve your region of Moldova, of Eastern Europe, or of the world. Any questions on that? Okay. Five minutes. Five minutes with two minutes for questions. Yeah. Five minutes. So this this so this could be put into one slide of saying for the uh, mushrooms, basically. They could say, my square where I'm gonna start, I have ten basements in Chadolinka that we're making making these from. I know that people in Gagosia trust me, so within one year I'm going to move to five villages in Gagauzia. Once we have some success, we will move all throughout Moldova within three years. And within five years, we expect to be all throughout Eastern Europe, which has a total market potential of $5 million. That's all you need to say. And it takes about 30 seconds. But it shows them that you thought about it. OK? Yeah? Considering uh, the end of uh, the idea of your, your team, maybe um Maybe uh, the students uh, should know about how to sell their uh, business. Yeah. If they don't want to continue after high school. Yeah. So this is this is a good point. We'll we'll get to a presentation. I'm not giving it later, but we we'll get to a presentation on sales later in the day. When I sit down and speak with um, clients at the Chamber of Commerce, I ask them a question of. What is the impact that they want to have in the world? Most people I work with don't want to create an international company. They want to create a company that will allow them to pay for the food of their kids, send them to, send them to university, and to live a fun life in the village or in the town. And that's okay, right? So for for businesses in Moldova, we don't expect that everyone's going to create international companies. For the Diamond Challenge program, 
you will be judged based on how big you can grow. Because what Diamond Challenge believes is that young people like you will be the people who change the world and to solve the world's most important problems. And in order to solve large groups of problems, you're going to need to have a business that can scale and can grow. And that's just one of the ways that this competition is judging people. But if your business idea, if you as a high school student don't want to run an international business, that's okay. Or you, international. Or a national business. You can run a regional business. We won't tell you that you have to have an international plan for takeover. But the judges will be looking at that in March. And that's how that's one of the things they will look at. If you have a great business plan, you are still available in in you can still do really well in the competition. But it may be held against you. It may be a, a slight negative if you don't show how you can grow. Is, is that about right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So again, for outside of this competition, it's okay if you don't want an international business. You can have a great life by creating a frizzeria for your own town. And that's okay, right? But for this competition, we're looking for showcasing businesses that can solve the world's problems. All right, well, if you guys would like to contact me personally, this is my contact information. Feel free to send me a message, give me a call. Also, we're going to make sure, and Payton's going to make a comment of this later. Payton's in the back, we might have Payton's going to make sure that you guys have the ability to connect with any Peace Corps volunteers. Um, and that you have the ability to connect with one Peace Corps volunteer to help mentor you. So let us know how we can be of support. If you do have a question specifically for me, I'm here. So, all right, thank you guys.